just briefly uh, uh, educate us, uh, especially our new founders, on uh, when we use this term incorporation, right? So, of course, not in the Pakistani context, but but in general, uh, as you look to serve this uh, uh, this ecosystem, uh, how do you define a holding company, a subsidiary? Uh, and if, if you have whatever knowledge limited or, or otherwise you have of the Pakistani ecosystem, just let's put out a couple of definitions, right? When we use the word incorporation and somebody is very new who's just starting with their venture, uh, what is the difference between these two? And I'll come back to Faisal also to you know, give us the same definition from his perspective. Oh, thanks. So the operational entity is basically the, the entity that you use to operate your business, right? So most of the startups in Pakistan, they will first uh, open a company in Pakistan, right? Get a product live or at least start the business in Pakistan before thinking of incorporating a holding company. Uh, if you're a startup, usually that, that terminology of holding company comes a little bit later on in the game where you investor usually will ask you to have a holding company that might be outside of Pakistan to inject capital. But basically a holding company is the, what you can think is the, the, the mother of your company, right? And you can have different entities that are all linked to that master, um, oper I mean, master entity that you have. Okay, very clear. Faisal, would you want to make any quick build on it? Because I'm coming to you in a minute with uh, getting a purely investor view on this. Yeah, sure. So yeah, so the, ho the holding company is the critical element uh, in terms of flow of capital into Pakistan. Uh, this was luckily allowed, uh, mirroring of cap tables was allowed, as Jan mentioned, you originally had founders would only be able to incorporate in Pakistan. Now that they've allowed mirroring of cap tables up in hold codes, uh, outside, that's what's actually one of the things that's unlocked a lot of capital coming into Pakistan. Uh, the main reason is there's capital controls in Pakistan, while it's not officially said that the capital controls are there, but the reality is in the past when some of the big investors, like even DFIs, like CDC have invested, and in companies like Daraz early on, when they had an exit, the state banks sat on their money for almost about, I think, four or five years while it devalued in rupees. So uh, so that, so effectively, this has actually been a game changer for Pakistan. Uh, for me personally, when I look at it, I think out of the 14 investments that we've done, uh, I want to say 12 are incorporated in Singapore. And in and they've all gone, I mean, the, you know, there's been a one-stop shop with Aspire to effectively open up set up the company and open up a bank account. And I can dive into what their use case is, but at the end of the day, it's in, in this, uh, in an OECD and FATF world, it's extremely, extremely difficult to open up a bank account for a hold code. And you can take up to anywhere from four to four to six months. And at that time it can end up being a, being a rejection even. So Aspire's really solved a, a key problem for these startups where speed is needed. 